Hi, I'm Brian Spinner from the White Dog Trail Company. Have you ever wanted to target lake trout through the ice, but you just didn't know how to go about doing it? We're going to do our best to help you with that today. First, we want to make sure that the lakes that you're fishing actually have lake trout populations in them. So you're going to want to do a little bit of research. Uh, start with the you know, natural resources sites for the state that you live in. I'd also recommend different forums, uh, ice fishing forums such as uh, iceshanty.com. They have different states listed and you'll be able to find conditions and reports for the different lakes that are around you. So you want to be able to select a target that obviously has a population of fish. All right, once you've got your target selected, we want to understand what the depth and the structure looks like of that lake. I'd highly recommend getting a lake contour map so that you understand um, the, the, the deeper areas and the, and the shallow and the flats and everything like that where the breaking points are. Um, you're going to want to study that map and, and we're going to choose uh, lake trout areas specifically based on the depths. Okay, so when we're targeting lake trout, we typically are targeting deeper water. It's not to say that they can't be shallow, because they can be, um, but far more often than not, you're going to find them in the deeper water. Okay. So in the lakes that I fish, we're usually looking for water that starts maybe 60 feet deep to you know, well over 100 feet deep. Um, you're going to look for the deeper areas that you have on, uh, on that lake contour map. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the setup. Usually start with a, an ice fishing jigging rod. Um, these are generally two feet to you know, maybe two and a half feet long in general, sometimes three feet long. You're going to want something that has enough backbone that you're going to be able to set the hook on a fish that's 100 feet deep, um, but you're going to want it soft enough that when that fish is thrashing its head around uh, near the hole, that it's going to absorb a lot of that shock. So I go with a medium, medium light action generally uh, for the rods. Something that's got plenty of backbone that I can really set that hook. For the reel, I typically use a good spinning reel. Um, somewhere in the, the smaller to medium size range, um, I want something that has a good drag. You're going to be fishing these fish, fish deep. Um, they're going to come up to the surface and a lot of times they'll peel right back straight down to the bottom. You want something that's going to have a good drag on it. So I go with a pretty decent spinning reel. Okay. Um, for the line, um, I don't like monofilament line. It has too much stretch. So if you're going to be setting the hook on a fish 100 feet down, you're going to have too much stretch to be able to get a good hook set. Um, I also don't like fluorocarbon line for spinning reels because it's too stiff and it'll, it won't sit well on the reel and um, it'll, it'll cause a mess a lot of times. So we kind of go with a little something in between. Um, this is a copolymer line. It's essentially fluorocarbon coated, so it has a lot of the properties of fluorocarbon in that it's very, um, it's almost invisible under the water essentially. Um, and it doesn't have a lot of stretch, um, but it's still, it's supple enough to use on a spinning reel. So I use the um, P-Line FloraClear. For lake trout fishing, I generally use um, about 10 pound test line. I want something that's got enough oomph behind it that I'm going to be able to move the fish if I need to. Um, I really like this line for the spinning reels. Okay. We want to talk a little bit about baits too. Lake trout are predators. They're going to be chasing bait fish for the most part. So you want to imitate uh, the, the bait fish that are in your lake. So you want to understand what kind of you know, bait fish are swimming around those lakes. Um, for the lakes that I fish, there's a lot of smelt and a lot of uh, silvery looking bait fish essentially. Um, so we typically go with, um, this is one of my favorites, I go with a Berkeley Gulp. Um, it's a smelt, um, smelt colored and, and flavored really too, um, minnow. And we're going to put that on a jig head. Um, I just want something that's going to imitate the natural forage in the lake. Okay. You can use all sorts of different baits, quite honestly. Um, you just want it to be something that's going to imitate the natural forage. Now when I rig these baits, I'm putting them on a fairly heavy jig head. So we're fishing f water that's anywhere from usually 60 to well over 100 feet deep. And you want something that's going to have enough weight to be able to get down to the bottom fairly quickly. Um, I use a 3 8 ounce um, jig head. You can go a little bit lighter. I've seen people go lighter. It's just going to take a lot longer to get to the bottom. And sometimes when you're marking fish, you want to be able to move that bait fairly quickly. I really like the 3 8 ounce jigs. Definitely make sure there's a sharp hook. Um, but you're good, you, I really like having that weight to be able to get down to the fish quickly. Now to rig this jig head um, for this particular bait, it's really simple. It's like most soft plastic baits. I'm going to do one really quickly to show you on a package I already have open. 
Um, these things are stinky smelly, but <laughs> oh, I can smell them pretty good. All right, um, you're essentially going to take the point of the hook, you're going to go through the nose of the bait, and you're going to go through to the point where you want that bait to be able to come up here to the top, and you're just going to poke it through right in the center, top, and you're going to push that guy right up onto the hook. And essentially, there's your bait. Right? So it looks like a natural fish. Um, the hook is up here. Um, that's essentially how you're going to rig these guys. Okay? Just tie it onto your line, and you're ready to go. Now I want to talk a little bit about how lake trout are going to react to the bait. Um, you, lake trout are going to be cruising around and foraging for these fish. And what is a natural reaction to a bait fish that sees a predator coming? It's going to flee as fast as it can to get away from that predator, right? And so this is exactly the reaction that we want to imitate. Um, a lot of times, if you're and you'll be watching on your sonar, if you're jigging and you see a fish come up, or you weren't paying attention, which is happens a lot, um, and you see a fish show up and you missed it and you didn't start making them chase, they'll come up, they'll nose that bait, and I almost never get a bite that way. Um, you really want to imitate that natural chase. So as soon as you see a fish show up on your sonar, you want to start reeling as fast as you can and take that bait away from that fish. And those, those fish are aggressive. You're going to see them chase after that bait and they're going to grab it aggressively. Okay? So it's going to be really important to understand what those fish are actually doing at any given point in time. You're going you're gonna to adapt what you're doing based on what those fish are doing. So it's really important to have a really good piece of sonar to be able to help you, right? You're not going to know how to react if you don't know what that fish is doing. You, it, without a piece of sonar, you're essentially blind and you will catch far, far fewer fish than if you know what they're doing, okay? I, I use a flasher. There's plenty of good um, sonar units out there. You want something that's rigged specifically for ice fishing. This, the transducer is rigged so it specifically hangs straight down. I don't have to worry about rigging in any special way. This is a Vexilar FL18. I've seen a lot of people use um, regular fish finders, but they're adapted for ice fishing as well. So they won't have a flasher style, but they'll have a graph style. And that's fine, uh, whatever your preference is, but you need to be able to know what that fish is doing. Okay. Now we're going to show a clip of, uh, we're going to give a little tutorial on using the FL18. And... Um, in the middle of my tutorial, a fish shows up and it chases, um, so we're going to watch that right now. So right now I'm using the Vexilar FL18. It's, uh, we're in about 60 feet of water, and uh, I've got it set to the auto zoom, which locks on to the bottom 6 feet of the, of the water column. So on the right side of the screen is the entire depth from 0 down to 60 feet, and on the left side is the auto zoom part. The reason that we use the auto zoom part is um, when a fish shows up, you'll see them really bright on the left side come up, and then you know it's it's a really good trigger to know that there's a fish there and you need to start reeling to, to get them to chase. So I'm just going to drop my, my lure down, and you'll see it as it goes down the right side. You'll see them go down, and I'm going to let them go all the way down to the bottom so you can see what it looks like on the left side. You can see it going down the right side, it's getting toward the bottom. And we're going to break through in that six feet. You'll see it start showing up on the left side real soon. And there it is. Okay, I'm going to drop it all the way down to the bottom. And usually when I'm jigging Lakers, depending on the clarity, I'll bring it up so it's not in that view. But So I'm bringing it up somewhere between eight and ten feet off the bottom usually. And I'll jig, and you'll see it. I'm jigging on the right side. You'll see them going up and down a little bit. So as I'm fishing, if it, oh, here comes a fish. <laughs> see that fish come up the left side? He's catching it. He's right there. And come on, bite, 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 bite. There we go. Oh, he missed it. He missed it. He's still there. And he dropped off. Shoot, we missed him. He's dropping back down the right side. He's re-engaging. I'm going to lift it up again. See if we can get him to chase again. He's not chasing this time. He felt it a little bit. Shoot, we missed him. Well, you, you can't hook every single fish that chases, and a lot of times that does happen. Here's another clip where the fish chases and he hooks up right away. Oh, here comes one. Here comes one. Chase it, chase it. Oh, he's going he's gonna to get it. Here we go. There he 
here we go. It's bigger head shakes. Hopefully a bigger fish. Yeah, it's a bigger fish. Now another thing that I've learned from, from ice fishing for a while, especially for lake trout, is that the fishing can be streaky, all right? There are a lot of times when you will mark fish, uh, but they're not necessarily chasing. That's okay. Um, they're streaky kind of fish. We'll go out in the morning sometimes and we'll be marking fish, but they won't be committing. They won't really be chasing. And then as the sun comes up a little higher, sometimes they'll start to chase a little bit, but they're kind of half-hearted chasing and they're not really, they're not really charging the bait. And then all of a sudden it turns on and they start chasing aggressively and the fishing can get really, really hot. Um, so if you're marking fish, that's a great thing. Stick with it. You're in a good place and just keep going until they uh, turn on essentially. You know, I want to encourage you too not to give up on a fish that's chased but is not really committing. Um, you'll watch them as they kind of come up and kind of half-heartedly chase. You'll watch that the lure come up and the bait come up kind of right behind it but then they kind of tail off. The lure keeps coming up and the fish kind of drops back down. Keep chasing that fish. Drop it right back down to them and um, a lot of times they'll re-engage and then you can get them to chase again. Now I've had fish after the fourth or fifth chase they'll either bite on the fourth or fifth chase or they'll bite on the fourth or fifth, dr fifth drop. So don't give up on that fish. Until that fish disappears from the cone of view on your sonar, keep fishing for that fish. A lot of times you can get them to bite. Um, you will be frustrated at times because they'll play around with you but they won't really commit. That's okay, just keep waiting. Hopefully they'll turn on. Now in this next clip we actually have a fish that chases, hits and misses, but he doesn't really give up on the bait and he actually came so close up to the hole when he actually bit and missed that uh, I actually stopped using the sonar and I just looked straight down the hole. Watch closely and you can actually watch as, uh, as the fish takes the bait and I set the hook on him. Come on baby, do it, do it, do it, do it. Jigging for lake trout can be a lot of fun. I uh, hope you guys have learned something and uh, we'll hope to see you on the water. I gotta get this guy back in the water.